hello everyone you all are welcome back to my channel i greet you all i call it to all your time good morning good afternoon good evening wherever you are watching this video for that is my great thing i so much appreciate every one of you that watch my video that share my video may god bless you Oh, if you never subscribe for this my channel, do me a favor and subscribe and hit the bell so that if I drop on, you'll be the first person to receive. Okay, my people, I bring the updates. Make we watch, make we put our comment, put our opinion there. What do you think concerning this video? Put it in the comment session. Okay, make I put the full video, make we watch. The long run, he found out that Ujuku was a, a, a small boy. After all, I fought for the independence. Why would Ujuku be leading the war? And he turned 360 degrees and began to work against Biafra the second time. And yet, you call him a founding father. What did they find for you? Somebody like that. Did we ever send him to go and sign, anything, sign up anything for us? There was never a marriage. There was only cohabiting. And now that we have realized that it is time to go home, we don't need any permission from anybody. I thank Chukwu Okukabiyama for our Supreme Leader Mazen Nandekano, who answered the call when he was supposed to answer. And I tell Biafra people, we are blessed. When it comes to leadership, we are blessed. The only problem we have is that some of us are not paying attention. We are blessed with leaders. When a time comes that we need a leader, Chukwu Okukabiyama will always give us a leader. It's left for us to hold on to that leader and follow him. Mazen Nandekano made himself available. He answered the call. He did the evangelism to the call. Every sleeping dog woke up. Everybody, no, there's nobody sleeping. Anybody that is sleeping today, allow that person. He's not part of us. He woke everybody up. And when they thought they have gotten him, they didn't know that Mazen Nandekano is not just, he's not just a leader, but he's a spiritual one at that. He has already prepared somebody. He anointed the prime minister you are seeing today, Mazen Nandekano, by his own self, anointed him. When he told you about the new dimension, how can somebody tell you about the new dimension and you're still going back to the old wine? Are you not sick? He himself, by his, he wasn't in prison when he announced the new dimension. He wasn't sick. He was with his sister, even while he was still broadcasting. He was still with us when he announced and told you that this man is coming with a new dimension. How can you be talking about the new dimension? How many of you will leave a new model car and go for old model car? But that is what we see today. Some people still prefer to go back to the old things when you have been told that the new has come. This is the new dawn. Follow him. And today, my greatest joy is that we have come to a stage where we no longer cry. We no longer beg. There was a time when it was time for to protest. We protested and they laughed at us. They didn't pay attention. A time for petition. We wrote petition. They laughed at us. We brought evidence, picture evidence, video evidence, live evidence. They laughed at us. Look at where we are today. Finally, the man who is going to complete the assignment has appeared. And in this era, no matter whom you are, whatever suggestion you have in your own pocket, you can cry blood. We are moving ahead to Biafra. It does not matter what you think. We didn't sign up for this marriage in the first place, and we don't need your permission to walk away. That is one of the things that makes me love my society, whatever it is. So he doesn't care what you're talking about. Whatever, whoever you are, as long as you are standing against Biafra, we will crush you and move ahead. It doesn't matter what you want to offer. It doesn't matter you how rich or how poor you are or how close you are to us. As long as you are standing against us and you are supporting that, that evil cohabitation, we will, we will match you and go. From the onset, they told us we are not compatible. What are you waiting for? Even as, as, as we speak now, they are still doing it. Go to their conventional media. Everything you see in the conventional media is telling you that you are not part of us. In their appointments, they are telling you you are not part of them. 
in their policies they show you you are not part of them they take their money they share it among themselves their posts they share among themselves most importantly what is happening in lagos today is being sponsored from abuja some of you forget that the owner of lagos is the one that is your president today the man that owns lagos so sometimes you begin to look at the thing you think it's just lagos state the thing that's happening in lagos state is directly from abuja the person that owns lagos state has his own property he's the one that is your president today and he is telling you directly pack your bag and get away from nigeria you are not part of them and some of us are still forcing ourselves it's only a madman that we know, you will not know when you have overstayed your welcome when you go to a place you have to know when you overstay your welcome as soon as you overstay your welcome the best thing you can do to keep your respect is to carry your bag and go what go home even when you go to your in-law there's a state you stay with your in-law you begin to get insult the time is right for us to walk home if you are still waiting for these people sitting here to preach to you and beg you continue to wait you haven't seen anything yet. Mazen Nandekano say is going to start from taking over your shop. After your shop, they will take your land. After your land, some of you will not even come back with your own life. And you think it's a joke. The first one has happened. They faced your shop, they locked it up, they gave you bills and fine and you, you survived. They burnt the ones they were born. Now they are facing your house. After this, Watch out for the next step. You think it's ending tomorrow? <laughs> the earlier you begin to go. Some of them today are still, some of them are thinking they are still celebrating. They say, you know, it never reached my own side. They say, oh, it's not my own side. It's only this area. It's not my own side. Keep on deceiving yourself. The marriage has ended. There wasn't, there wasn't even any marriage. The cohabitation has ended. And we don't need permission to go home. If you love yourself, Chukwu Gagabiyama, what, he is so kind that he has given us somebody who will lead us home. Under the Biafra Republic of the Desire, that is the only hope we have. If you are not with the Biafra Republic of the Desire, sorry, I'm sorry, we can't help you. If you care about yourself and you really want to survive, the time is now. Pick up a responsibility on how to make Biafra a reality, like today. If there is nothing you are doing, pick up one thing you are doing, you will do. Pick up, no matter how small, no matter how poor, how rich you are, no matter, don't tell me there's nothing you can do. There is something every one of us can do. Pick up a responsibility now. Don't wait till tomorrow. If you do so, this cohabitation will end. And at the end of the day, we will be whom we are supposed to be. Thank you so much, my minister. I submit. Thank you. Thank Martin. you. Martin. Uh, as it choose, please mute. Okay. We recognize the presence of uh, our Minister 247 and then uh, Cipran Okechuku and uh, our Minister Define Mora. And before we give the mic to them, in line with this uh, forceful and fake marriage, let us uh, go memory lane. Right, I'm going to conduct a really interesting interview today with a gentleman I've met at the Nigerian High Commission, very interesting gentleman um, who's been connected with Nigeria for one way or, well, for one way or another, probably over the last... Um... Well, since 1970. I went to Nigeria in 70. Okay. If you'd please like to just give me a bit of insight that you gave me earlier on with regard to Nigeria and the whole politics and the issues that we're having today would be really interesting to um, get an angle from you on what exactly happened. Well, for me, the problem today, well, it goes back to the Muslim conquest of the North with Usman Danfodio and the Fulani Hausa conquest of the North and the North becomes Muslim and when the British colonized the North in 1900, what do we the British do? We very cleverly rule with a few hundred district officers through the Muslim emirs. 
It was the best thing that ever happened to Islam in Nigeria. Because before then, if you were a Muslim, you went, say, to the Teve area, what would happen? You'd be dead. Under the British, you could go as a Muslim trader and you could live and you could spread your message of Islam. So the British enabled Islam to spread in Nigeria and the British stopped the spread of Christianity because Lugard kept missionaries out of the north. He only let missionaries go to the parts that were not under Muslim rule, like the Joss Plateau. So the Christian church in the Middle Belt thrived in areas that had never been conquered by the House of Fulani. Why are there huge areas of the north of Nigeria depopulated today? The answer is Jihad. Because those who weren't enslaved by the House of Fulani or conquered by the House of Fulani, they either died by the sword or they fled to the hills, like the plateau, like the Gwoza Hills in Bornu. And in those hills, when I was there in the 1970s, there were no Muslims, none whatsoever. The people followed African traditional religion and with Jerry Christians. Because down on the plain, it was the Muslim Kanuri, and they're the ones that slave raided. So what's going on today in the Middle Belt? It's nothing to do with herdsmen and uh, uh, farmers. It's nothing to do with Muslim herdsmen, nomadic Fulani, and settled Christian farmers. No, and it's certainly nothing to do with climate change driving out the Fulani. This is quite simply jihad. This is just an extension of Usman Dan Fodio's jihad by other means. But nobody in England dare call it jihad because they're all shit scared of being called Islamophobic. Well, I'm not. I don't hate any Muslims, but I think Islam is of the devil and it has to rule and it must rule Nigeria. Islam a religion of peace? Don't make me laugh. Where is Islam a religion of peace? Where Islam rules? Where it doesn't, that is the region of war. That is Islamic theology. That's what this is. So those who are for violent jihad, in my view, they have the historic pedigree in Islam. They're the Salafists. Now, Islam is a broad church. Islam encompasses all lots of people. Most Muslims are not terrorists. But the people who are around us today, here, and in Nigeria, who are terrorists, by and large, are Muslims, and a particular kind of Muslims. They are violent Wahhabi Salafists. When I say that, I won't have some idiot accusing me of Islamophobia. They should credit me with a little knowledge of Islam, its history and theology. This isn't about Muslims versus Christians. It's about Islam must rule, Islam must triumph. And that's the case in Nigeria, and it's the case here too. Except here they can be a bit quieter about it. Thank you for that. I really, really appreciate it. And um, yeah. Really interesting. Please, can I just have your name? Can you just tell me your name for? You give me yours, I'll give you mine. Okay, well, we'll just end. Message delivered in a very concise manner. So we have um, Cipran, Cipran Okechuku. You go with the context of what you've listened and connected to the forceful marriage which the forceful and fake marriage which we have to end and with the notion and explanation of what the British ambassador has given you who served in Nigeria and knowing what the OIC organization of Islamic uh, groups or communities have come up with today and what you saw the British High Commissioner did in uh, Britain, unanimously folding them all up together to tell you that Nigeria is Islamic State. So it's like he's reminding them of what 